The Black Myth Wukong Xbox delay launch saga continues. It's further being suggested that the delay that was announced during the Summer Games Fest isn't transparent. See, the devs game science said that the delay for the game coming to Xbox was quality based. However, Xbox is now giving cues publicly that the delay is based off a last minute money app. Now this suggestion is pointing fingers at Sony and Game Science working out some last minute deal for time console exclusivity on PlayStation 5. But why is this being suggested? And haven't we seen this FUD before? I mean, this is all coming about again per an article from Windows Central. And it is important to note that the writer of this article suggested something similar with another title. We will show you what this instance was as we spotlight one of the main instigators here and we'll then let you decide what's likely going on with this title and it being delayed on the Xbox Series console. We tackle all this on the next installment of The Spill, our gaming hot topic video series. Let's get into it. Yeah. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and MM2K Gaming back again with another episode of The Spill. And on this episode, this one is titled Xbox Under Fire for Black Myth Wukong Money Hat Rumor. But before we get into all that, do us a huge favor hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please. Okay, let's get into this one. All right, so let's first talk about the claim here and where it all started. So supposedly, um, during the Xbox Summer Showcase, fanboy of the Xbox community claims that they talked to Sarah Bond. And Sarah Bond was asked by this fanboy, What's, what's the deal with Black Myth Wukong not coming to Xbox? Is it because of the Series S? And they claim that the response given back to them was it was business decisions, right? So that fanboy then went to the airwaves and tried to decipher what they thought business decisions meant. According to how they stated it, they didn't indicate that it was further elaborated that they were giving their two cents. So to be fair to said fanboy, even though the Xbox zealot community got out of control and said, no, so-and-so was told this, that, and other by Sarah Bond to, to their credit, all they said was Sarah Bond said it was business decisions. And then they on their own went and tried to decipher what business decisions meant, which a lot of us heard that and said, that's cockamamie. Let, let's, let's leave it alone. But now, now following that, before we get to now, following that, Jazz Gordon, a good friend, Jazz Gordon, same Jazz Gordon that tried to tell you that Crackdown 3 was just fine, right? When Next Gen 720 had alluded that it was seeing a lot of problems and it was seeing so many problems that maybe even canceling it was put on the table, was being suggested. Jazz Gordon had the audacity and the gall to say, no, I played the game, it's just fine. And called Next Gen a dummy. Meanwhile, you guys seen Crackdown 3. Think there's gonna be a Crackdown 4, <laughs> right? It's not hard to fathom that, as, G, as Z suggested, that there were probably talks about canceling it because it had been delayed so many times and it just wasn't coming out right. And really, Crackdown 3 came out so bad that not only was there an exodus of Xbox fanboy support, like a lot of people just started to say, this is it. And they went over to uh, PlayStation. We covered it, called it the Crackdown uh, Awakening. But Jazz Gordon himself gave the game a six out of 10 and lauded it. So he circled back around <laughs> and confirmed pretty much what next gen was suggesting per the information he got. That same jazz, also the same jazz that tried to convince you that Destiny 2 on xCloud, on the early, when it launched on the xCloud beta, that it rendered 
Stadia useless, even though Stadia's business model was completely different. And Destiny 2, the way it played on xCloud, was completely trash in, in doo-doo soup in comparison to how it played on Stadia. Stadia had its own problems. Trust me, because it got shut down. But believe you me, it was not Destiny 2 <laughs> being at like th th uh, 13 frames per second at 280p on xCloud. Right? That's, it's that same Jez Gordon that we've had to deal with with all his hyperbole and all of his hand waving and then all of the, the lies and the deception and then the momentary uh, moments where he's freaking out and he wants to be truthful to you. Yeah, that, that Jez Gordon, it's him. Same guy that told you he's not a journalist but then expects the developers of Wukong to respond to him like he's a journalist when they ask, when he asks, what is the problem? Even though they already explained what the problem was. Yeah, that same guy. All right, so then Jez Gordon goes on a podcast and he then propagandizes this whole same line that it's business reasons and the business reasons are likely due to a money hack. You know what I'm saying? That's what he's suggesting. He does it in a very sly and sleazy way. Well, what if it was this? And what if it was that? Right? Xbox had a good showcase. Now he's in love with Xbox again. You know what I'm saying? So now he's, you know, he's he's going back to his old ways, which is propagandizing information and deceiving people in in the hopes that it benefits Xbox. Okay. So that's how this all started. How did this, in my opinion, cockamamie reasoning that PlayStation money had at this thing, how did this get new light? Well, Jazz Gordon, and I'm not going to show the article. I don't believe that the link or whatever, we're not going to advertise it because it's, it's just FUD and, 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 and it's very disingenuous and, 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 it's, and it's shameful. I mean, we we do not for say, not safe for work stuff here and we talk all types of crazy stuff here. But what Jazz is trying to do, from all uh, uh, you know appearances, is, is 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 repulsive. So we're we're not going to show you the article in its entirety. We will reference to it. But Jazz creates an article where he kind of suggests in the article that you know there could be a money hat deal, and he expressed to Microsoft, hey. I got questions about a money hat deal. Can you give us information on that? And Xbox slyly responds again because they're now in love with Jazz again because they had a good showcase. That oh yeah, um, yeah, we can't talk on potential business deals with uh, somebody else, but you know what I mean. I mean, we want to get the game on the platform, and we're doing everything that we can to do it, right? And for anybody that has half of a brain that works, just a quarter. That slow pitch down the middle to Microsoft to try to hit it out the park for all the Mensa candidates in, their, in the zealotry wing of their uh, their fan base. You say, oh yeah, yeah, see? Look at how that's worded. Yeah, it was a money hat. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but the gaming community is not full of rocket scientists. I, I, I tell you, the, the, the stuff that you guys give life to and even go back and forth on, is amazing and i'm only bringing this up because of the repulsive nature that's being used here in order to just make xbox look good when we all know essentially what the problem is right but that is the backdrop to this story that it was brought up per what is what was being suggested out of a very short phrase that came from sarah bond I guess the Xbox zealotry wing thinks that this is something good to push on behalf of Xbox. They've told you in videos and podcasts, Xbox is back, right? <laughs> we'll let NPD speak of that. But Xbox is back. So now they're in full fledged. Uh, we are going to make stuff up again. Mo. All right. So now because that's where we they, they are at, and that's how this story came to light, I want to show you guys something that I tweeted out earlier. So let's take a look at this, right? This is a tweet that I put out here, honoring our good friend Jazz Gordon and all the truthful stuff that he says. You know, you should get a Pulitzer. Even though he says he's not a journalist, still think he deserves a Pulitzer. Anyway, or uh, 
or, or maybe for, for people like him that are just bloggers pretending to be journalists and want to play the journalist, I mean the blogger card when it's convenient for them. Maybe they got something called the false falsitzer, you know, the, fu- the Fulitzer. Maybe you can't get a Pulitzer, maybe you can get a Fulitzer. Uh, my tweet says, never forget, Mr. Money Had Fud, hashtag, but wait, I'm not a journalist. Try this playbook before. He suggested Larian's Xbox Series delay was nefarious as well. But when you can use that get out of jail free card of I'm just a blogger, you're not accountable for any of this, huh? And let's show you what's happened here. So back when when Larian said, look, we want to do an Xbox release day and date, um, but we can't because we're having issues. Talked about, hey, look, they said Xbox players will see your questions about if and when you can expect Baldur's Gate 3 on Xbox. What had happened was when they had finally advertised when they were dropping this, there was no Xbox content, right? Um, and so people started asking questions. What the hell is going on? I thought this game was going to be everywhere. And they responded to that. Uh, we've had an Xbox version of Baldur's Gate 3 and works for some time, but we've had run into some technical issues, particularly with split screen co-op. And we're still working on an Xbox version of BG3, but we're not yet confident enough to announce it. Okay. So they said that they told you what the problem was. Split screen is a problem. And they tried to do it in a professional way where they didn't kick the Series S's teeth in, even though the Series S is what's causing the frustration. Wasn't good enough for Jess. Jess, the, Mr. Blogger Jess, the journalist Jess, whatever he is. He says, Xbox fans need to know, need to now go through the same waiting game with Boulder's Gate 3 as they do with Final Fantasy VII Remake and other games with vague and undefined PlayStation exclusivity periods. Last time I checked, did, did they not say in this tweet or this in, in this communication, I'm sorry, that uh, we've seen the questions and it's particularly with split screen co-op, right? Didn't they explain that? But no, you know, it's not good enough for Jazz. If it's not coming to Xbox, the greatest console ever, there's gotta be something nefarious coming on. He even doubles down on this stupidity and this idiocy by saying, don't be surprised if Baldur's Gate 3 never comes to Xbox. Yeah, that same Jess. But let's continue on. So how does that relate to what's going on now? Well, let's see, this is the statement from the developers of uh, Black Myth Wukong, Game Science. They said, on which platforms can I play Black Myth Wukong? They say PC and PlayStation 5 users can enjoy the full game starting August 20th, 2024. We're currently optimizing the Xbox Series X and S version to meet our quality standards, so it won't release simultaneously with other platforms. We apologize for the delay and aim to minimize the wait for Xbox users. We are announced the release date as soon as it meets our quality standards. Very similar to what's going on here. And when we found out even more, because Boulder's, I mean, Larian Studios did not want to kick in Xbox's teeth. But, you know, after Jazz put out what he put, even though they put this out first, when Jazz put out what he put, they were forced to, to tell tell the, the story of the tale. That it was the Series S. We've had more developers tell you that it's the Series S. We just had the makers of Kingdom Come Deliverance too, which a lot of those people, I've seen podcasts and communicated with these folks. These guys are big time Xbox supporters. Even they had to admit that because of the Series S, the low and common, lowest common denominator console wise that they were developing for, they've had to scale back their intentions for the sequel, right? But Jess, you know, look, this is this is Xbox lying season. So Jez is picking up where he left off. And then he writes this article, right? Which again, I'm not providing a link, sorry. I'm just gonna cover this excerpt where he says, Black Myth Wukong for Xbox Series X and S seems to be a myth of its own, at least for now. I asked both Xbox, I mean, Microsoft and Game Science to commit on optimizations issues, seeking some clarity. Was the Xbox Series S to blame? Game Science didn't respond, but this morning, a Microsoft spokesperson offered the below. Now this is the slow pitch down the middle. I want you to hear this trash. 
We're excited for the launch of Black Myth Wukong on the Xbox Series X and S. Oops, sorry for that mic hit. And are working with game science to bring the game to our platforms. We can't comment on the deals made by our partners with other platform holders, but we remain focused on making Xbox the best platform for gamers and great games are at the center of that. So here, here's the thing. You can't comment on deals, right? But you want us to believe that this deal ha this deal is there. That's what the innuendo leads to. And this slow little pitch from Jazz being a good old boy, trying to butter you guys up again and get on your good side again. You let them come out there and talk about your platform and it needing some more optimization. You let that lie be told. And you're not countering the lie. You're, you're just suggesting that there might be a deal. There's something astray here. Uh, Jazz closes off this portion by saying Microsoft is clearly aware of the rumors that Black Myth Wukong took some kind of exclusivity deal. Most, myself included, thought that the Xbox Series S was the likely culprit from the outset, but perhaps there's more to it. Perhaps there isn't. Again. A slow pitch down the middle for that a boy, Jazz Gordon, continuously spreading his fud like he's prone to do. Okay, so now that we've done that, what is it that I believe? Look, anything's possible, but I'm someone who gets paid for a living for understanding demographics and understanding trims, trends and patterns. We see a pattern. The pattern is that developers, when it comes to these AAA games, are having issues with the Xbox Series S. It's the lowest common denominator, and it's not even good enough to play some of these games. Like I want to show you guys something real quick, if I can, if, if I can find it. It just, it just crossed my mind to put this up here. But this is the spill. This is our, our rant <laughs> series. So I do want to put this up here to show this every to everybody to give you guys more clarity on on why I'm saying what I'm saying. Shout out to Reforce Gaming. He put this out here. He says Black Myth Wukong lists twice as much memory than is usable in the Xbox Series S for its minimum required specs on PCs. I trust what the devs are saying about optimization. I'm I'm with them a thousand percent. The memory, not the VRAM. That's with the GPU, you know what I'm saying? Or, or the APU, the, the, the GPU portion of the APU, the memory, the onboard memory, the minimum is 16 gigabytes of RAM, right? This is a UE5 game. U, UE5 is known to be a CPU hog and like, I guess, you know, maybe a hog on resources as well. I mean, 16 gig is in 2024 isn't a lot anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if you're, if you're not dealing with like 32 gigs of Ram for these, uh, these triple a games, then you're, you're, you're up, you're up issues Creek. You know what I'm saying? Um, for these triple a PC games. So that's what they're requiring on a minimum basis. The Xbox series S the last time we checked had 10 on board, which is already six gigabytes under the standard, right? But then two of that had to be allocated to the um, operating system unless they made adjustments. But I don't think the whole 10 gigabytes is allocated for games. Like portion of that has to be allocated to the operating system on the console. So not even the 10, the full 10 gigabytes is usable. PlayStation doesn't have this problem. I think it's very simple doesn't take rocket scientists to figure it out. And without any proof, I don't even know where you have enough to even create an article. Yes, here's, here, here's what I think. Um, Xbox had a very good showcase as far as what they showed in the pace that they did it. Um, I think it was their best showcase this generation. Um, and 
it also gave the what it did for the brand is it made the brand a lot more plausible for people possibly to keep them interested in looking at it and saying hey look you know maybe this can do something for me and they want to capitalize on it they just don't know how you could talk you could see phil when he was talking to ryan mccaffrey he was like a kid in a candy store he was just so excited just just talking crazy of, of excitement he was exuberating um you know happiness because of how it was perceived they want to capitalize on it and they're probably scrambling figuring out how they best can do that they don't want anything to take them too low and take them back to where they were at pre the showcase so now they got the atypical wood buffers coming out here and trying to insert fud into the picture um here's my thing i i, I you know jazz is jazz is jazz and if he claims that he's only a blogger whatever that is encompassing of windows central and i think that that makes windows central um uh that, that that is a reflection on them if this is their main writer on all things xbox then that is a problem he is their main contact for all things xbox he's the main person that writes when something xbox happens he jumps out of the forefront he's the one that informs the community that, that's the reflection on windows he's 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 posing like a journalist i can understand if jazz followed up behind stories like every now and again once a week had an opinion article or even you know after the fact but someone needs to be in front of them if windows central needs is, is going to be taken seriously as a publication that covers microsoft they, they just cannot be so this is a this is bigger than jazz this is a windows central thing they're choosing to do this I don't think they can any longer be looked at as a respectable publication um, at a large scale. I, I now put them in the same token as, as Kotaku. And those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Cause like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Again, they'll lead you to Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and MM2K Gaming. If you are watching this as part of the podcast, stay tuned. You're going to get a great podcast. But if you're watching this as an individual video, check out the card to the left now. Click on that. It'll take you to the podcast where we talk about this even further. I kick in some teeth even more. And there are no holds barred, even the language. Our podcasts are not safe for work, just so you know, just to give you an, an indication of how serious we're going to get. With that said, we appreciate everybody for coming through. Thank you so much. Until next time, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.